called war demobilization. Um, the Keynesians at the time predicted that we'd have 25% unemployment, a second Great Depression, and instead we had the entire post-war economic boom that meant unprecedented prosperity for America's middle and working classes. So like I said, whether it's under a Democrat or a Republican administration, we know what works. Reducing the burdens on the economy has always revived it. We also know what doesn't work. Massive increases in spending, tax increases, additional regulatory burdens can crush an economy. We saw that sort of under Bush. We got a full uh, experience with it uh, in 1929 when Herbert Hoover responded to the recession that year with the Smoot-Hawley Tariff Act, which was a massive increase in tax, steep increase in tax, about 20,000 imported products. Herbert Hoover took the federal income tax rate from 25 to 63 percent. He increased federal spending by 60 percent and managed to turn the recession of 1929 into the depression of the 1930s. Franklin Roosevelt simply came in and amplified and compounded those mistakes. Uh, and in, uh, in uh, uh, May of 1939, in May of 1939, Henry Morgenthau, who was um, Hoover's uh, uh, Secretary of the Treasury, came before Congress. Who did I say? Hoover? I'm sorry, Roosevelt. Roosevelt, Secretary of the Treasury. This is May 9th, 1939. He comes to Capitol Hill to talk to uh, the uh, Democrats on the House Ways and Means Committee. This is what he says, and it's, it's this heart-rending admission. He said, no, gentlemen, we have tried spending money. We are spending more than we have ever spent before, and it does not work. And I have just one interest, and if I'm wrong, as far as I'm concerned, somebody else can have my job. I want to see this country prosperous. I want to see people get a job. I want to see people get enough to eat. We have never made good on our promises. I say after eight years of this administration, we have just as much unemployment as when we started, and an enormous debt to boot. Unemployment after 10 years of stimulus spending uh, was still at 17%. God help us if another Secretary of the Treasury has to come before Congress 10 years from now and explain how we lost another decade and squandered trillions of dollars of our wealth on pro pro programs that just don't work. As I said, we've got plenty of experience in this. We know what works, we know what doesn't work. The problem is we've been doing stuff we know doesn't work, and it doesn't work because it can't work. Government cannot inject a single dollar into the economy until it's first taken that dollar out of the economy. It's true, if I take a dollar from Peter and give it to Paul, Paul's gonna have an extra dollar to spend. He's gonna spend that dollar in a local shop, the shopkeeper's gonna order more inventory, the manufacturer's gonna order more resources, that dollar will ripple through the economy, that's all true. The problem is they completely ignore the other half of the equation. Peter now has one less dollar to spend in that very same economy, one less dollar to ripple through. Income transfers will always, in every single case, net to zero because of that simple phenomenon. And in practice, or in, in, in theory anyway, in practice it nets to much less than zero because we are transferring huge amounts of capital from investments that would have been made in the productive sector, determined by the, 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 the productivity they would produce. And instead, transferring those decisions to the government sector that makes its decisions based largely on political considerations. So, if we are going to produce the kind of economy that will begin to get this debt under control, um, we are going to have to reduce the burdens of government. And that's on the revenue side. And on the spending side, we're going to have to bring the entitlement increases that are simply running away with our country back under control. Now, to give you some idea of, of Medicare, um, you're aware that the Medicare actuary uh, has, uh, has now projected that the system will bankrupt by 2024, just completely out of money. Um, it's not hard to see why. Uh, there was a recent study published that showed that an average couple 
retiring at age 65, earning $89,000 a year, will have paid into the Medicare system about $110,000 during their working lives. They will withdraw more than $350,000 from the Medicare system from that point forward. A system in which people pay in $110,000 and take out $350,000 simply cannot last. The, uh, the uh, administration recognizes this. Uh, that's why they put into uh, Obamacare the Independent Payment Advisory Board. What they did was to take a half a trillion dollars out of the Medicare program and establish a 15-member uh, IPAB, Independent Payment Advisory Board, uh, 15 appointees of Barack Obama. They will then have life or death say over what services, I think the President's exact words were, what services are necessary uh, and how much the government will pay for it. Now this at a time when we were already watching a huge exodus of doctors and hospitals out of the Medicare system. Uh, it's becoming harder and harder to find Medicare doctors simply because of the price controls already in place. The IPAB is there to basically double down on those price controls. Uh, and um, even so, the system bankrupts by 2024. Uh, the Republican alternative is to say, wait a second, we've got to get this back on a sustainable footing. For those who are within 10 years of retiring, we're going to keep the system the way it is. For those 54 and younger, and I'm 54 myself, so I'm the first group going into the new system, we're going to shift Medicare onto the platform that we currently have with Medicare Advantage. About one in four Medicare patients already opt for Medicare Advantage. How many of you are in, in Medicare Advantage? Anybody out there? Okay, well then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Where you'll have a selection of plans. Could be several hundred plans before it all shakes out. You pick the one that best meets your own needs. And then the Medicare system comes in and underwrites uh, that plan. The sicker you are, the poorer you are, the older you are, uh, the more the, the Medicare system underwrites of that plan. Uh, that is enough, according to the CBO, literally to save Medicare, give Medicare patients a far greater range of choices than they have now, and put it back on a sustainable footing. And by doing that, along with the other reforms that are in the, um, in the House budget, we can go back to that uh, the slide of the uh, path to prosperity. There, yeah, right there. Um, this is where we are right now. This is our point of decision. If we continue down this road, well, again, we won't continue down this road. We, we, that, that's simply an economic impossibility. What will happen, according to all of the experts that have testified before the House Budget Committee, and this is from left to right, the one thing they all agree on is, on this present course, within five years, if everything goes well for us, we will hit a sovereign debt crisis uh, where the uh, federal government's finances simply collapse. If you want to know what that looks like, just turn on the news tonight and watch what's going on in Greece. Um, most of them also tell us that's the best case scenario. Most likely we have as little as two years to get this thing under control. So that's why all of this is coming to a head. This is why the, the great debate in Washington is now going on, and that's why a great debate across the American landscape is going on among the American people over whether we're going to continue this course and bankrupt our country, uh, or whether we are going to insist that this, this lunacy uh, be brought back under control. So that's where we are and where we're going. I don't, didn't mean to gloom up the evening too much, but uh, I'd rather... Uh, uh, give you uh, both barrels of reality here because it's been a, you know, I, I'm used to washing state government finances and they're appallingly bad. I was stunned when I got to Washington, was appointed to the budget committee and started looking at these numbers. Um, it is the great question of our age because before you can uh, provide for the common defense or promote the general welfare or preserve the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, you have to be able to pay for it. The ability of our government to do so is now coming into grave doubt. And if history is screaming anything at us, it's this warning that the governments that bankrupt themselves simply aren't around very long. 
Uh, no country in the history of the world has ever spent and borrowed and taxed its way to prosperity. An awful lot of countries have borrowed and taxed and spent their way uh, to bankruptcy and economic ruin. And um, I would hate to see that happen on our generation's watch. When I look out at groups like this, uh, I'm encouraged that that is not going to happen on our generation's watch. Oh.